how are you all doing? I uh, just wait for the uh, presentation to come up there. So just first of all, thanks very much to you all for coming on here this evening. Um, the point of this evening's uh, webinar is really an information for the main officers uh, in, in each of the clubs around Connacht to give an idea of the programmes that we have in place um, over the last number of years. And also over the course of last year, we developed some new programmes uh, which link in with the old ones and we just want to make sure that every club is is aware of them and uh, that you can avail of them as as you see fit. So I suppose the outcomes of the scene and we'll, we'll talk through about what the club support program is about. Um, our club planning document, which is new, the club coach mentoring program, which is new from last year. Um, an existing program that uh, we had developed a number of years back. It was the nursery and the skills development resources for hurling and football. Um, the coaching and games podcasts and um, the club coaching manual. And then a, a new national program which has been launched in the next number of weeks. Uh, Be ready to play a program helping teams uh, to, to return back to training. The first program is the is the club support program. This is a program um, that is generally done over over a number of phases. I'll explain how the program is delivered. We'll say in, in non COVID times, and then I'll explain um, after that how we have adapted the program uh, so that we can run it during during this this period. So the first it's it's three nights in total um, for a club. And this will be done every four to five years, uh, typically with a club, depending on the on the size of the county. And um, the, basically what happens here is the club get as many club members as possible. The executive, uh, all the coaches, players, past players, past members, present members into a room and uh, a discussion is facilitated. So we go through things like how the club rates versus the, the GA's mission, the vision, uh, their values. And then we do a SWOT analysis uh, in the club. That's the, the whole group is broken into various groups. And uh, what we want from that night is that the club is uh, comes up with three to five coaching objectives um, that they work on towards that the, in that year. The second night then is uh, the provision of a, a practical coaching uh, session and that is typically based around the three to five objectives that the club set out. So for example, that might be uh, if it was a club school link, uh, it would go out with the club school coach and and uh, show them the ropes uh, or if uh, they were setting up a, a nursery program, it would go out with a group of coaches and set up the, the programs. And the last the last night of it is uh, where the games manager and the tutor uh, along with the the coaching committee within the club uh, review the program and uh, uh, see where the club is going from that that year on. So um, for the for the course to be a, a success, uh, each of the three to five objectives need to be um, well advanced within the first six to eight weeks. So each club um, that is accepted onto the program may avail of, avail of a grant uh, of up to a thousand euro. Now that is is not in place for for this current year, uh, but has been for the last number of years, and we hope to continue that again next year. So I suppose how we've adapted this for for COVID, and we have trialed it with one club in in each county, and our coaching kind of coaching committee is meeting uh, in in the next week to decide um, whether we proceed with it. Um, so the 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 audit uh, the SWOT uh, analysis is done with a with a smaller group within the club. Um, so the, the executive and the main coach from each of the age groups, but through a 365 form, all the other club members are audited on what they think or how they think the, the club rates around the mission, mission vision, uh, values and the SWOT analysis as well. And that is discussed by the, the smaller group. And again, they come up with three to five objectives. Um, they discuss it with the wider coaching community and uh, they decide on it. Um, and then night two, uh, hopefully we'll be able to do a face-to-face -face later on in the year, but there are also a suite of um, 
online options that we have in place for this year and the review is the same as, as normal. So as I mentioned, this is typically something that is done by a club uh, every four to five years and is uh, we found it to be a very uh, useful program and gives great energy to a club and gives them great direction. The next um, one is the club planning document, which I'll just switch over here. Um, So this is our, our club planning document. Um, so as I mentioned, the club support program would be done every four to five years to put a plan in place of the club. And we would see that this club planning document then would be done every other year in between uh, by the club steering committee, coaching and game steering committee, which we will talk about in a minute. So I just go through it uh, uh, quickly enough. Uh, that's the GA's vision uh, and mission. It's broken into a number of different areas, planning, club details, uh, planning cycle, a club audit, a SWOT analysis, a plan, who's uh, the roles and responsibility to deliver the plan and uh, the review process. Um, there's a glossary and an appendix at the, at the bottom. So this is just an introduction to the, to the program and the more than the, the club uh, support program, what we're looking at here is the purpose of the document is to build a uh, self-sufficiency and sustainability within your club in all aspects of coaching and games and this document helps to guide the coaching officer under the guidance of the club coaching and games committee in developing and continuing uh, club coaching pro projects in line with best practice so these are a number of the, the the key areas from national level so you have your child up to 11 years of age up to 17 is the youth the cool camps which most of you will, will be aware of your schools initiatives learn and development, which is your education courses, and then you have your, your talent academy squads. So we have our core values and Anthony, in terms of planning and what we're de delivering in the club, um, we would feel that they all need to be done in line with the, the values of the association for, for obvious reasons. So in terms of the, the planning process and, and I suppose where, where it starts from national and how it uh, ends up down at club level, so at national level, there's a National Coaching and Games Committee. Uh, then there's a National Coaching and Games Manager, which is Shane Flanagan, who has been uh, in that role uh, for the past uh, 12 months. He has taken over from Pat Daly, who was in that for, for many years previous. Um, we have our Provincial Coaching and Games Committee, which is made up of all the all year county coaching officers, uh, the games managers, and then myself uh, as Provincial Games Manager, Damien Coleman as Provincial Hurling Director and, and John Prenti. Um, then you have your County Coach and Games Steering Committee, which is your, your uh, County Coaching Officer, County Chairman, uh, Secretary Treasurer, PRO. And then you have your County Games Managers and the GDAs and GPOs who deliver down to yourselves as Coaching Officers and Secretaries and uh, Chairpersons. And then each club we would hope would have a, a Club Coaching and Games Steering Committee, which we'll, we'll, we'll mention uh, further down. So your, your, your club coaching and games uh, steering committee is responsible for uh, driving coaching and games within the club. That's your chairperson, secretary, coaching officer, treasurer and club PRO and obviously can uh, liaise with the, the wider uh, coaching community within the club. So we have our planning cycle here. So really what we're trying to do is assess the current uh, status of coaching games within the club identify projects that will uh, will improve the status of coaching games within the club, measure the pro progress of these um, projects and review the outcomes um, of, of the projects. That's just a little um, image telling us the same thing. So the next uh, three pages are probably the most uh, important in the document. The, on this page, we have a, a club structures audit and a club participation audit. and. Really, to, to drive our participation, we need the, the structures within the club uh, to be to be quite strong. So they're all yes or no answers. Uh, does your club have an active coaching officer? Does your club have a coaching and games committee in place? Does this committee meet quarterly? Um, is there a, a plan in place? Does your club have a club school link um, trying to recruit uh, players into the club? And does your club host or encourage players to attend 
uh, regional GA camps. The next couple of um, questions are based around uh, Garda Vetten, safeguarding our coaches qualified. Uh, obviously very important now because required by law. Um, does the club have a children's officer and uh, does your club have a code of conduct for parents? And again, these areas um, are very, very important because they may not be a problem until, until some issue arises in a club and then it can become a, a, a serious problem. Um, then does your, your club coaches plan and review their activities? So do the meet as a group? Does your club uh, track participation throughout the year, which we'll, we'll talk about in the in the audit underneath? And does your uh, coach meet regularly throughout the year to share their experiences? Um, so next part then is your, your participation uh, audit in terms of how, how many are actually participating in your club. So we've broken down into nursery, uh, under 7s, 9s, 11s, 13s, 15s, 17s. And the first one here is, what are the numbers actually in your catchment area that are going to school? Um, that will, I suppose, give you an idea of uh, what's, what is your pool of players. And the next one then is the number of players actually playing within the club. And when you match the two of these off, that will give you um, what I suppose I would term uh, your participation rate. So if you have 200 kids in, in your catchment area, um, going to school and there's only a, a, a hundred of them actually coming down to the club. We need to, that's a 50% rate and we need to get that up a, a lot higher. Um, the number of teams, I suppose, at each age group um, that we're entering. So if our participation rate is high and we've uh, at particular age groups, 30, 35 players and we're only entering one team, that means that there's probably 15, 20 players getting all the game time and 10 sitting on the bench. So if that's the case, we need to be entering uh, multiple teams uh, to give all these kids games so that we can get them through to adult level as much as possible. Another also key aspect in keeping players involved is the number of games that our competitions give, um, the number of challenge games, blitzes, depending on the age group, the number of coaches so that we can get quality coaches with that group, the number of them that are qualified, number of weeks of activities and the number of sessions per week. So um, I should have mentioned at the start, we have a football audit, a hurling audit, and also in the appendices, there's a there's an audit for ladies, uh, football and camogie as well, if if, um, if they're part of the your particular club. Um, so the next part then will is our SWOT analysis. And really what you what you found in the structures audit and the participation audit, you'll you'll be starting to get a picture in terms of what's your strengths, what's your weaknesses, your opportunities and your threats. Then uh, from from your SWOT, we then need to put a, a plan in place of what are the five objectives that we, we want to hit for that year and how are we going to deliver them? What's the time frame? So I've it broken down here into three month sections. So if one was to deliver a nursery program by the end of the year, the first is February now, the first one here might be get someone who's actually going to deliver it. Um, Second three months might be recruit volunteers to help you. Third quarter here might be getting equipment and booking facilities. And the third quarter, then you might be doing your nursery in um, in November, December time. And the same, you will break up the, the each of the objectives over the course of the year. <clears throat> and a very important um, part is who's actually responsible for delivering them, each of the five. And I suppose typically what we, we may see in some clubs is that there's one person doing the five of them, which which uh, isn't easy on, on that person. So we try and um, delegate them roles as much as possible and then put a date on, on when the club see fit that, that that project should be finished. Then we want to review halfway through the year. So a mid-year review, what's the status of it? And then an end of year review. Uh, I suppose quite simple process. Then the, the last page here, we have a, a glossary of each of the terms um, throughout the, the document. Then we have the appendices, the different committees, the coordinators. Um, if a club wants to do a five year plan, obviously we're, we're talking about a one year, but if we can get a three or five year plan, that would be great within the club as well. And then the appendices for the ladies and um, camogie um, codes there. 
So I'm just going to, as, as Seamus mentioned, as we as we're going through, if you have any questions, um, put them into the questions box there and we'll uh, we'll um, go through them all at the finish. So we'll just flip back to the presentation. Next uh, one, which is a, a new program, which we're, we're, we're just uh, piloting at the minute is the club coaching a coach mentoring program so as i mentioned i suppose trying to connect up all our projects and how they work is is key the club support program is trying to get the structures uh, right within the club and that's done every four to five years by the wider community in the club the club planning document is done by the club steering committee every other year and then we're trying to help uh, coaches individual coaches or groups of coaches in in, in, in each of these clubs um, that, that may need uh, help. So what the programme involves is that um, the way we have it structured in, in the counties is that there's a GPO or GDA um, for each region and uh, each of these uh, GDAs for the moment are given uh, two groups from, from two clubs to work with. So this might be a group of coaches from nursery, goal games, under 15s, under 17s or under 15s or under 17s. The head coach will uh, within the club will liaise with the GPO. So rather than going in with, with one coach individually, um, what we'll be doing is working. If we we'll say, for example, we had an under 15 group, we would um, work with if they had four to five coaches, we will go in and work with all four to five coaches um, as a little group. And the head coach would be the person who liaises with them. So we recommend six to eight uh, contacts. So there'll be two or three days done online and one to one face one face to face uh, and but that will depend on on the group uh, in question and the other context then might be emails might be phone calls if the if the head coach or, or the other coaches have any issues um, they can ring the, the gp or gda so basically the mentor must provide the coaches with the tools guidance support and feedback for them to thrive uh, during their experience and we would see that the GPO or GDA must in no way become involved in any activity other than, uh, than their coach mentoring role. So we don't want them going in, taking over training sessions, taking over match day teams, anything like that. We want them to make sure when they're finished at the end of the year that the coaches are able to are upskilled in these areas themselves and are able to deliver what they need to deliver with their particular group. So just uh, how that process would work would be an early um, online call with the coach would be a planning uh, an early season planning looking at the the role of the coach um the coach pathway the player pathway how a, a coach may form a support team goal setting best practice and identify resources and uh, support that may be available and again a lot of that will depend on what stage that the particular group of coaches are at which will be different in, in every instance the mid-season mid uh, communication may be an online call, it may be a face-to-face, -face, it may be uh, a both, again, depending on the group. So this will be planning and preparing your coaching sessions, communicating your message, building rapport with the players, parents, body language, and identifying um, threats or opportunities for the player and, and team. And then the, which is very important, and, and an area that maybe sometimes is left out, is the, the end-of-season reflection of how it all went. The coach's self-reflection, uh, player reflection, review of the goals and the, the plan for that group of coaches going forward um, over the winter months to, to further develop themselves. So I just quickly flick through the, the typical type of coaches. So you do have your, your beginner coach who may lack confidence, maybe organizational skills, needs to get their coach education done. Uh, they may not have worked with groups of kids or parents before. Um, they would typically be an assistant coach and uh, then you would have an advanced coach which probably would be a head coach with a child or a youth group um, maybe looking to do an award one or just done an award one um, and some of the, the areas they would uh, need help with would be uh, I suppose taking on that leadership role um, the demands of the time constraints with that I suppose the winning versus development uh, for for uh, child and, and youth players getting the balance right there and communicating with the with the different personalities then you have your experienced uh, coach which may be up to award uh, two and uh, identifying some of the areas that may be of, of interest to them so within any of the groups within a club you could have a mix of 
any of these three types of coaches and the GPO and GPOs and GDAs will, will work with them. So the next three areas, um, I'm just going to go through with three slides um, and then I'm going to go to the website because that's where they're they're hosted and I will send out the, the, all the links for these uh, tomorrow. So we've uh, we've a nice little uh, nursery and skills development resource for kids from four to seven plus uh, years. I suppose typically in the nursery is uh, classified as being between four and seven, but I suppose physical literacy and uh, that area is is an area of, of major concern within the within the whole country. And uh, there's typically kids um, eight, nine and ten and so on that uh, have, have quite poor physical literacy. So this is an area that uh, you'd be you'd be doing a great service to the kids in your area if you could get um, this area nailed off. The next one is the Coaching and Games podcast, which has been uh, developed by uh, Dara Cox over the last uh, since last March. And then we have our club coaching manual, which obviously a manual is typically in a PDF. But um, Bree Mangan, who looks after our, our website and social media, has broken it down into uh, small little snippets uh, on, on the website. And we'll go through that in, in a few moments. So I'll just flick over to the website here. So this the the Connacht GA um, website. Uh, so there's a number of, of tabs along the top. Some of you may or may not be um, used of, of the website. So at the top here, just one, actually the club planning document is down here as well. If you want to click into it, the one that I went through earlier. Um, and it, it, it's downloadable, there's a downloadable PDF there. So the first one we're going to go through here is the, the nursery. So if we click onto the nursery here. We have it broken down for, for kids of that age into physical literacy, football and hurling. Uh, the first one I go into here is physical literacy. <clears throat> so a lot of you will have heard physical literacy. It's also called fundamental movement skills. There's lots of different names on it. Basically, it's the it's the basics of movement for typically for for kids, but uh, skills that need to be honed right up till adulthood. We have what you typically call, you might have heard people saying ABCs, so that's your agility balance coordination. And then another acronym you might have heard would be uh, RJTs, which is running, jump and throwing. So we just go through the running one here. We have um, we have the running, so it's broken into three phases and there's a number of exercise activities that can be used there for that. So I'll just start to play the video here. Players are asked to sit upright with hands either side, driving their hands, propelling them forward in a running motion. Players are asked to run forward staying on the balls of their feet, keeping their head and back straight and upright. Clear channels are marked out for the players. They're asked to run or sprint in a straight line from marker to marker. Next it moves on to, uh, to phase two. Ladders are set out in front of players as shown. Under stride would be one foot in each rung of the ladder. Over stride would be skipping three rungs of the ladder. Players run in pairs to a marker. Coach makes a signal and the players must turn in the direction the coach gives. So you can see how we're progressing through the activities getting harder as we 
Markers are set out in front of players as shown. Player on the coach's signal must run, lift the beanbag and place it on the opposite marker. Markers are set out as shown, spaced out five meters apart. Players must run to the marker as indicated by the coach. 20 meters is long enough for four or five year old players. Circuit is divided as shown on the video. Players are divided into two teams. Team A must pursue Team B. So you can see there how running was broken down and from the first phase, very simple, right uh, up to a very advanced running there. And the same is done for uh, jump and throw and coordination, balance and agility. And these are even videos that you could send out to younger age groups within your club at the, at the present moment. So the same is done for here for football. Uh, if you want to do the, the basics, uh, nursery skills for football and hurling, we just go through one skill for each. So we have the solo here, the first example. What is the solo, the key teaching points? So we have the solo here, you'll see introduced very early. Step one of the solo is you just bounce the, the ball off your knee on both sides. Uh, children are getting used to get the motion of the solo. Step two is getting the children used to doing the action of the solo. So what they're doing is just mimicking the solo without the ball um, and just getting from the heel, the heel from the bum and then flicking up with the toe towards the nose. Step three of phase one is getting the children to do the solo, but holding the ball at a lower height. This allows them to get the action of the solo and keep it under control. So as you can see, very, very basic uh, movements there. Moves on here a small bit. Step one in phase two is getting the kids to do a solo at each of the cones, on the right foot on the way out, and on the left foot on the way back. Uh, you're doing it at a slow pace so that the kids get a chance to do their solo and then they quicken it up themselves as they get better at the skill. Step two in phase two brings in change in direction. Uh, players are on four corners on the outside. Each player has to do a solo at the three cones of his color and back, i.e. the blues do it at the blues. Step three in phase two, every player has a ball within the square. Uh, when the coach blows the whistle once, they solo with the right foot. When he blows the whistle twice, they solo with the left foot. It's bringing in more traffic and also reacting to the coach and avoiding other players. And the last one then for the solo. In step one of phase three, we bring on and challenge the kids a little bit more. This time they're going out in straight lines with their right foot, solo one, and then their left foot and under a little bit more pressure because the speed is brought in. In step two and phase three, we bring in the zigzag solo. This is where the kids solo off the right and left foot along the way and then you can make it a little bit more challenging by putting a time on it. Step three in phase three is where we work on the technical side of the solo. Uh, right hand, right foot, left hand, left foot. 
you can start off by doing this with a ball in each hand working in straight lines to start off with and then moving in to a square where they go at different directions and they got to avoid uh, other players as well so i suppose that gives an example for one skill as to how it develops from the very basic there of tapping it off the knee to using two balls in uh, multi-directional um, so the same is done for the punt pass the hand pass the bounce body catch and high catch I leave it in your own time to, to flick through them if, if uh, it's of use to you. Um, we'll just flick into and go through one of the hurling skills here. So we have the, the grip and swing. Uh, we have an explanation of it there, the key to each in points. And level one here. Establishing the dominant hand on the hurley for the grip. The coach gets the child to leave the hurley on the floor. He distracts the child for a second. The child will then be asked to pick up the hurley off the ground. He will automatically pick the hurley up with his dominant hand. The sword fight is a good way of developing the child's wrists and footwork. In this little game, the child has to prevent the other boy from clipping his ankles. The one-handed dribble is a great way of developing the child's wrists with the ball. The child has to keep control of the slither while using backhand and forehand action. Then we'll move on to phase two. Having established the grip, we now move to the ready, lock and strike positions. For ready position, the player holds the hurley with the dominant hand at the handle and the non-dominant hand halfway down. Slide the non-dominant hand to meet the dominant hand so that they lock together. This is the basis for the strike. And then the third and final phase. Phase three game here is to develop the children's accuracy with striking at a target. The target in this instance are tires where the youngsters have to use left and right. In this practice, youngsters are using the ready lock and strike while striking the tire and the use of both sides is incorporated. In this practice, the children are using the left and right side while working in pairs. They are striking in multi-directional fashion. So again, uh, for, for hurling with the grip and swing, striking, hand pass, roll lift, uh, jab lift, catch and solo. So again, I leave it in your, your own time to, to work through them. And um, again, as I said, through this lockdown, uh, there might be some content there that can be um, sent out through links uh, to, to parents for kids to practice. So the next uh, thing we're going to move on to is the, the Connacht GA podcast, which has been developed uh, through Dara Cox, who is a, a Hurland GDA in uh, Sligo and Leitrim. So since last March, um, Dara has done 21 podcasts in total. Uh, they're nice uh, short snippets. And uh, I suppose the thing that, that, that when we sat down to design them at the start, we wanted them to be I suppose under the 30 minutes and most of them are under between 20 and 30 minutes and there's lots of different areas there's Colin Callanan there on hurling goalkeeping there's a one later on um Damien Eames on football goalkeeping Stephen Henry on psychology Brian Hanley the minor hurling uh winning or winning manager and the lines from Leitrim um who's over strength and conditioning then there's a number of the rest of the staff was done uh talks with Pat Kilcoyne on the structuring of sessions Karen Kilkenny and the importance of creating a, a positive atmosphere um Stephen McGurn uh, on the Super Game Centre, which is a, a great initiative for increasing participation and giving game time to kids of all age groups. Uh, Jerry Spellman there on, um, I suppose, talking around a lot of the, the nursery stuff we've just gone through. John Prenti done one on the Airdome. Uh, 
Peter Kearney on the three T's and three P's. Um, Adrian Hessian talked about a, a nice one there uh, in terms of a hurling club for Cashel Gales out of Balahadreen who fielded their first senior to our adult team there during the, the summer after forming club 10 years ago. Ross Donovan, Mickey Quigg and uh, then Martin Fogarty on uh, the hurling director. Uh, and the, the last uh, couple of ones, Eva Clancy, who was a Sligo nutritionist, um, done one around nutrition during lockdown. And uh, Keith Higgins, who was recently retired from, from Mayo, <coughs> has done a, uh, he was obviously a, a well-known uh, dual uh, player and gave a great insight into his career over, over um, many years. <coughs> Donald Rin um, also gave one. Uh, he's a former Leitrim captain <coughs> and current player, and uh, around his his journey through the academy squads and into senior and with his club. So again, uh, you can check them out in, in your own time. <coughs> so the last one is uh, that we're going to go through here on the website is the coaching manual. So as I mentioned, this is typically in a. Uh, it, it was originally a large PDF that a group of the, the staff created last March. So we looked at, um, it can be broken down, we broke it into structures, strategies, guidelines and policies. So I'll just pick out a couple just to give you an example of what we have in there and, and you can look at them in your own time. I suppose why we broke them down into the short snippets is that it can be emailed around to club members. Hi there, it's Seamus. Uh, I think we've lost Cahill there for a minute. We'll just work to get him back online. Just hold on there for two seconds. Hi everyone, uh, we'll have called back online in a minute, we're just having an internet issue here at the moment. Just while we're having that little breakdown there in uh, connection, guys. There, uh, oh, you're back, Carl. That's grand. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Um, my whole team's crashed on the computer. Sorry about that. So, um, as I was saying, we were broken into structures, strategies, guidelines, and policies. So, I suppose why we we put it into this format is very uh, simple for I suppose officers like yourselves. Uh, to send around little snippets of information here uh, to, to people within your clubs. So we talked about the structure of the coaching committees earlier. One here that might be useful for, that I know there's a lot of club coaching officers on, uh, is the roles and responsibilities. Um, so we have uh, an outline of, of what your actual role should be within the club. Uh, chairperson of the Coaching and Games Committee, looking after the club school link, coach education and planning for the various groups, um, skills required and other requirements. And then that's a downloadable PDF there at the at the bottom as well. So we're, we're back up then into the, there's a, a planning one there, which is just a shorter version of the planning document. We have uh, strategies there, which would be, we'll say your coaching philosophies. I'll just flick into coaching styles here, which I'm sure you'll be able to put the people into the different categories. What, what is a successful coach? Uh, different styles in terms of are the direct, uh, cooperative, facilitator, submissive. Uh, so an explanation of that and how, how the different uh, styles affect uh, the players that they're working with. 
So um, then the guidelines would be around, you know, the coaching process. We, we talked through the nursery program. I just take two different age groups here. So if you have a, a group of uh, under sevens coaches working here, it's, a, it's just a, a quick guide. Football here on the left, uh, right on the hurling. So you have the technical, the physical, the tactical, what they should be doing at that age group in each of the different areas, the coaching style, player characteristics, the equipment that might be needed, a one hour session, so warm up, stations, finish with games, some coaching tips there, and then there's a few links uh, where you can get more drills and games and some more information for working with that age group. Uh, we'll just take an, age, an older age group there, um, just to show the difference, we'll take the under 17 group. So obviously this will be quite different with football and hurling again. The technical skills that we're looking at, the physical, the tactical, the team play, what's expected um, of the players there, what the coach's self-reflection. Uh, a typical session will be longer, more intense, um, using games as much as possible, and a few tips there again, and some links uh, that you can go through at the bottom yourselves. So then the, some other things there would be just in terms of player profile and maybe specialist jobs there like goalkeeping, um, free takers, uh, the role of the captain, <coughs> that type of thing. And then there's other short snippets of information around the coach education pathway, you know, coach's self-evaluation, which is a, an important tool, uh, attendance lists, uh, annual planning, Goal games rules, the role of the parents, practicing at home, uh, fun trips, nutrition, hydration, club school link, code of conduct, social media. Um, so we, we've tried to cover as much areas as possible the clubs would want information on. And again, I suppose if there's any gaps in it or any areas you feel where it could be improved, um, you, we, we're always open to um, feedback and critique on that. Um, so I'll, I'll just flick back into the, the presentation here again. And we're, we're nearly there. <coughs> so that's our club uh, coaching manual. And the last one is uh, Be Ready to Play program, which is a program which has just been launched. Uh, there today and nationally um, and maybe of use to ye as coaches um, or your coaching in the clubs and the, the players uh, in your club. So what the Be Ready to Play program is, um, it starts on the 2nd of March. So basically it's fortnightly um, athletic development programs which will look at mobility, speed, strength, endurance, um, incorporating the, the ball and uh, uh, hurl as the case may be um over the for the for the rest of the season um during lockdown now when we get back in smaller groups and when we get back uh playing uh the programs are developed by satanta college in in Thurles and will be available on the ga website uh, but each coach and player will have to register to get access to them um also in conjunction with that it's there's an educational series for players and and coaches there's coaching education webinars and uh, sports science support webinars covering areas uh, on coaching, athletic development, <coughs> psychology and well-being, nutrition, uh, performance analysis, skill acquisition and physio and injury prevention. So that's it uh, from me. Seamus, uh, I'm not sure if, if you, any of any questions, you can put them into the question box there. Um, you may have been doing so throughout. And Seamus will come in there with any questions that uh, people may have. Yep, uh, thanks a million, Carl. Yeah, we've had a few questions popping in here. Um, a couple of them are a little bit repeated and stuff. Um, so we'll just I'm just filter through them here at the moment. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so first one up here, just go back to the start. How can uh, somebody apply to take part in the club support program? That's just the first question. So yeah. the club support program uh, can be applied through the, the county games manager uh, in, in your particular club. I'll put up a slide here now. Um, it's actually the last slide on the presentation that has the email address of the, the county games manager, or that can also be done through uh, the GPO or GDA that's uh, linked to your club. So that's... Uh, 
you can see uh, Lee Moog in Sligo, Billy McNicholas, and the sorry, other. Sorry, Carl, I'm sharing you wrong there. Um, I'm just click. Sorry, yeah, I can do it here and here. That's my mistake. There you go, guys. Um, so, yeah, so contact through your, your coaching and games manager there. Uh, excellent. Um, another question that came in How can we apply to take part in the coach mentoring program? So again, that will be through your your regional GPO or GTA or the county games manager, whichever um, whichever is your best point of contact there. Okay, and um, we had a couple of these ones. Uh, the documents that you were showing uh, during the present presentation are they available online anywhere? Yes, the the club planning document. Uh, I'll email that out tomorrow. But it also, as I, I showed there, it can be downloaded. Um, from the coaching section there on the on the website. Excellent. Um, um, just on the podcast, what platform can we access the podcasts on, uh, and are they available from podcast providers? That's more or less the same question. Yeah. Uh, just where they're being hosted from. So yeah, they've been hosted mainly there on SoundCloud, but if you go into the link there on the coaching. Uh, part of the website and click on the the writing is uh, it'll bring you straight through that's a link straight through to SoundCloud where, where uh, Dara has them hosted. Brilliant. Um, another uh, we had a couple of these ones as well just in relation to LGFA and um, a cl uh, one, cl uh, one club format is the coaching mentorship available to coaches over the ladies in the club so effectively does the coaching does the, the coaching mentorship is that available to the ladies side of the club as well as the men it's, uh, we'd, we'd, it depends on the we'd have to talk to each of the games managers and depend how many um, applications there would be and so but we'd, we'd try and help out everyone as much as, as we can okay and the last couple here. Um, when we download the club planning document, can we get help with filling it out if needed? Yes. Um, your again, your regional GPO or GDA is the person to contact there. Um, they're hoping they they have been sending it out. I think to the clubs um, over the last number of weeks, and they're hoping to have uh, them in by the end of February. Um, so that would be. So yeah, contact your, your local GPO or GDA. And if you're not sure who that is, you can contact uh, the games manager as, as is on the screen. Brilliant. Um, I'll just share back up the games managers there again. Um, la I th do think we just have one or two left. Um, you mentioned uh, about athletic development program at the end. What does that entail? And a follow up to that is what ages are the ready to play program aimed at? So there's there's different there's two different sections. There's a there's a youth and an adult, and they will be segregated within that, depending on the, on the training age of the the player. So that program is updated every two weeks on the website. So registrations, it, the the full program will be launched uh, from the second of March, and the programs will be updated every two weeks uh, through the GAE learning site. So um, we'll be sending out more information to the clubs. I'll send out the registration link to everyone who has registered here tonight uh, come the 2nd of March as well. And the list of uh, <clears throat> the schedule of speakers will also uh, be announced on the 2nd of March as well for the coaching and the sports science um, web webinars. OK, um, we have a wealth of other questions here. I suppose we could be here all night answering these calls, to be honest with you. Um, I suppose the handiest thing to do is we'll keep a record of them and we the names of the people who are putting them in, so we'll try and get them answered to them and get them, get them no, out. We, we, we might do a frequently asked questions uh, section and I send it out with the, with the information and the links for from, from all the information for tonight. Yep, yeah, um, that sounds good. So um, I think that's everything covered. Um, thanks a million to everybody who attended tonight. Thanks to Carl for giving up the time to go through everything in such in-depth detail. And again, guys, these things are all there to help you. So try and make the most of it. I'll just hand over to Carl to sign off on. Um, just to compare with James, just uh, thanks very much to, to everyone that, that came on tonight. We had uh, over 300 registered for, for, for the event. Um, 
just I suppose uh, we, we have the, the programs there um, for, for you to avail of. Um, any help that you need with them, uh, just come to ourselves, the games managers or <coughs> the GPOs and GDAs in, in your area. Uh, we're here to help and I hope tonight has been of, of some use and help for you. And I suppose we'll just sign off by saying um, stay safe and hopefully we'll be back on the field uh, training and playing very soon. Bye bye.